Hello everyone. Today's devotional will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 through 19, where it is written. Now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, the coast of Tyre, and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were healed. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed all of them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It begins, the coming of the kingdom of God. For in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and he made humanity, and we're supposed to be God's steward of creation. We're supposed to partner with God in this creation, as our, we would be God's servants, priests to this planet, rulers or regents under the authority of Christ, under the authority of God in the world. That's what God wanted in the first place. And someone decided, you know what, God, we're going to go our own way. Throwing the plan off, subjecting the creation itself to entropy, futility, and death. God didn't give up. God has got things back on track. And the whole, that's the whole story of the Old Testament. It's messy because God keeps trying to get things back on track. And people say, you know what, God, forget it. For example, Moses at Sinai is a good example. God said, I'm raising up this nation. I'll give written instructions in writing of what I want. There's no guesswork. And you'll be my people, and you'll be a light to the nations. And people took the very word God gave them and said, you know what? This makes better than you. It didn't work. So finally, this time in the text, Jesus Christ, the second person in Trinity, become God, or same person, the Trinity, the Son, become human, says, I'm not sending a prophet with written instructions. I'm becoming human. I'm becoming part of my creation, and I'm going to do it personally. And he appoints his 12 apostles. And so the mission begins. Real healing. God never wanted there to be sickness. He brings healing. God never wanted there to be death. God brings life. With the 12 apostles, and the 12 tribes of Israel, the Lord begins the mission of renewal this time, not by sending a proxy, but by doing it personally. And they think, oh yeah, Jesus, you think you're God? We'll have you killed. Good. That was my plan the entire time. By dying, I forgive everyone their sins. If it's a sin, I forgive it. And by rising again, I bring my resurrection to everyone who's ever lived. In fact, by my resurrection, I will restore the entire creation to the way it was meant to be before the fall. Thank you for killing me. But you say, wait a minute, Jesus, that might be good for you, but the mission's not complete. You're not back yet. True, he's not back yet. He will be. The resurrection will happen. The creation will be restored, but we're not there yet. Rest assured, we will be. In the meantime, we as part of the body of Christ, the church, we are the successors to the apostles. And it's not just apostles, okay, to sit in a corner and do nothing. The apostles had a mission to teach, to preach, to make the gospel known, to uh, do mercy work, to help people. The apostles, through their authority, could do miracles. Miracles do happen, but we can't snap our fingers and make them happen. We pray, and you know what? Sometimes, every now and then, they do happen. But we're not here to do a magic show. We're here to preach the gospel, just like the apostles did, to make Christ known. We're here to do works of mercy. It's not just knowing something in your head. God loves these people. And that, as we as the church, as we wait for the second coming of Christ, make all things new, that is our mission, to make Christ known and have mercy on ourselves and mercy on others. Why? Because the Almighty God has had mercy on us. Let us close with prayer. Lord, we thank you for your mercy on us. 
We thank you for your death by which you forgive us our sins. We thank you for your resurrection with which all will rise with you. And Lord, have mercy on us on the whole world. And by your Holy Spirit, help us also to have mercy on others and on the whole world. Amen. <laughs>